All right, everyone, today's special show, another one from my home, number two from my home. Uh, and today we're gonna be speaking really about some important stuff. Now, I get a lot of DMs from everyone going, hey doc, I have a million supplements and I'm lost. I don't know which one I should take, which one I shouldn't take. Um, so I wanna help guide everyone to what I call the show on essentials, supplement essentials. Which one should we take based on just overall generalization because of maybe what we're getting, we're not getting in food or other factors that can really be uh, an issue or influencing why we may be depleted. Um, and then we have a very special guest. Chef Serena Poon is a very, very unique type of chef, one that you may not have ever seen because she incorporates food medicine, awesome stuff I talk about it all the time, but then the energetic aspect behind it, and you know I love energy medicine. So without further ado, let's just get to this knowledge bomb. I had mentioned this. There's a lot of folks who don't know what supplements to take. And again, I'm gonna preface this whole Knowledge Bomb segment as you always wanna check with your doctor, right? I, nothing here is a recommendation. I'm sharing with what I take and what I think that should be readily available as part of our supplement regimen uh, based on a few factors. So what are the few factors? Well, all right. A lot of us don't need a healthy diet, so we're, not, we're already not getting the nutrition that we need, especially if we're following a standard American diet, which I know many of you are not um, because you've been listening to this show. Uh, but also, and even before that, but also we're not even really eating a balanced diet. Sometimes there's people who eat a very specific uh, of class of foods and that's it. Uh, so we're sort of cheating ourselves as getting those micronutrients that we really need. On top of that, there is soil depletion of minerals and, uh, and other nutrients. Not as dramatic as, as people say, but there certainly is a depletion uh, over time. It's been diluted, for example. Um, but that's not necessarily the case as to why we've become nutrient depleted. Um, part of it, those issues, part of it. But really the case why we become nutrient depleted, aside from eating the poor diet, but even if we're getting the healthy foods in, and aside from soil depletion, is really gonna be our digestive system, right? Dysbiosis, uh, digestive issues. These are two major things that are the main drivers between us not being able to absorb those nutrients that we're getting even if we're eating healthy, right? And we see this from the crap in our food, the crap in our water, the rise in antibiotics, right? Losing, the air quality is worsening, chemicals in the home. You hear me talk all about this and that cup is filling up. Well, what's happening is that we're not absorbing the food the way we, we need to, right? Even if we're eating healthy. So what I wanna do is now bring up the topic of supplements, right? Supplements are that, just that. They supplement a healthy diet. So I'm here to talk about top five supplements I think everyone should be taking, right? The ones someone had said, Dr. G, what five supplements can't you live without? And I thought, this would be a good show. Boom, there we go. So really it depends on the person, depends on your constitution, your genetics, your diet, of course. Um, right, if someone manifests IBS in their digestive system, the other person or, or their best friend can manifest arthritis um, and their, other, their brother can manifest migraines, right? So it, it varies differently for different people. So this is really a generalization, but some of my favorites. So I spoke about this on the last episode, minerals, minerals, minerals. We need minerals. We need a mineral complex in our lives. We need to be adding it to water, right? You know I had that water show and I talked about uh, the importance of cleaning out our water. Filtered water is really important, but sometimes many of these high-end filters take out the minerals too. And that's okay if we're eating a balanced diet and we're getting good minerals in, but if we have digestive issues, which many of us do, um, or there's depletion of the minerals in the food, then we wanna make sure we're getting a mineral complex into that water, right? Why? These minerals send signals to our body, right? They're the reason why our nerves can communicate with the outside environment and the inside environment, internal and external. Um, they help balance the fluid in our body so we're not swelling up and we're staying swollen, right? Uh, they're the reason we can contract our muscles. So important, they, they help assist in the function of our immune system, which everyone needs right now, right? Uh, they help in healthy red blood cell balance. They support various organs like the thyroid, right? We love iodine for the thyroid, right? Some have antioxidant effects. Some act as enzymes or they can help uh, enzymes, uh, their function. Balance the blood sugar. I mean, you, this is totally amazing stuff. The minerals are essential for everything. They help, every cell needs a balance of minerals in the inside of it and the outside of it. And it's a very specific balance. And cellular function isn't optimized when the ratio is off. So 
what we need to do is give our body those building blocks. But really one of the most important functions of minerals, and I mentioned this on a few shows ago, is how it acts like an electrical charge, right? We charge our phone, right? We need to charge, we charge our cell phone, we need to charge our cells. And we do that by that potential that I just spoke about, that ratio of minerals on the outside, minerals on the inside, when when coupled with the sun and coupled with the earth, we're getting that electrical potential from the earth and that signal from the sun. And that's how we recharge our cells. We do it with our phone every day. We have to do it with ourselves every day. So this is minerals, 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 right? So uh, add it to your water. I use the Quintan Minerals, again, no affiliation. Um, I use it one or two times a day, or if I'm sweating, maybe even more. There are other mineral complexes out there, but really I want to offer you the best, the best one, so I'm not gonna even speak about other ones. So that's the first one. Everybody needs minerals. Ask your doctor, but I believe everyone needs minerals because we're so depleted. Um, and even when I do the tests, like I'll do a micronutrient analysis, and minerals are always on the low end for most, most people. So what? But I, I'm pretty confident in saying that we do need them. Number two, liver, 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 liver. All right, you hear me talk about toxins so much, but we have an incredible capacity to detox. The liver is everything, right? It's our master detox organ. You wanna know how many roles it has? Over 500 vital roles in the body. Helps produce bile, right? Bile is essential for detoxification. That's the reason that's, that grabs all of those toxins so we poop them out, right? Some of them we pee out, but some of them we poop out. It helps the hormones, that's excess hormones, we poop them out, but they're through, they're in the bile. Uh, it, helps, it helps proteins in the blood, build proteins in the blood. It helps produce cholesterol. We need cholesterol, right, for our hormones. We need it for healthy hormones, healthy hormone balance. Uh, it helps blood proteins, right? We need the protein balance in our body also helping with fluid balance. Uh, it helps give our body sugar when we need it most. It helps with blood clotting. It has 493 other functions, right? These are just a few major ones. So you see the liver is so, so important. One of our most important organs, they're all important, but this one's so essentially important for us to live. When you think liver, think healthy hormones, think healthy blood sugar, think healthy clearance of all of those toxins, alcohol, drugs, right? Uh, we need to support our liver now. Just like we can get fat, our liver can get fat. This is called non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. This is when fat builds up in the liver. What are some of the causes, right? Well, with fatty liver disease, it's really a lot of alcohol. Alcohol and infection could be really part of it. But non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, this is really big. Eating excess of calories, if you're stuffing your face with bad foods on top of that, that's gonna to lead to non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. I'm talking about this for a reason. Uh, you have to think about high cholesterol, high triglycerides. If you see this on your blood work or a loved one's blood work, that's the fat in the blood that's gonna promote fatty liver. And this could be genetic. Another common cause is medications. Another common cause is diabetes. Another cause is high fructose corn syrup, which I talked about on one of my shows. But really, why is this a problem? Uh, it's because the fat can lead to inflammation, hepatitis, which can lead to uh, scarring, which is cirrhosis. Right, so then we can, and once your liver is uh, fibrotic and it's there's scarring, you ain't really gonna reverse that. When you're on the inflammatory part, it can be reversible. The, the liver is really powerful and you can really help support it. But what happens is then we have reduced liver function and that's a problem because when we have reduced liver function, all of those aforementioned benefits of what the liver does, well, that goes down. And if that goes down, your health goes down, okay? so. The reason I mention this is 10 to 46% of folks in the United States have fatty liver disease, which is incredible, mostly because of our crappy diet. But aside from balancing metabolic health, we really, really need to protect our liver from non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. So what are some of the things, essentials, that I think everyone should be taking? Well, a liver complex, something to support the liver. It could, be, it could be nutrients, but really herbs play a major role in helping the liver. Milk thistle, I know you heard about this one, it's very important, right? We have some literature both in vitro, which is outside of the body in a cell, but we also have it in vivo, right? And that's within the body that we see that, that milk thistle can be hepatoprotective, meaning that it protects the liver, which is really incre incredible. Uh, milk thistle has these flavonoids, Right? and they're called silibin and silimarin. Now what we see in the studies is they decrease the, the markers of liver damage, right? Alkaline phosphatase and GGT. Those two markers we'll see in a, when a liver's really stressed, aside from other ones, but these are some major ones that we see. Well, it'll help decrease it in, in intentionally damaged livers. Um, as per the World Journal of Hepatology, they did a review on milk thistle and they explained this herb has really an incredible 
uh, potential as an application to cure alcoholic and non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. That's pretty incredible. And they did mention cirrhosis, which is wild. Ischemic injury, that's when it's a reduced blood flow to the liver. Um, drug and chemically induced hepatic toxicity, radiation, viral and toxic hepatitis, right? Uh, and, uh, and it also acts as an antioxidant. So, so I, you probably all heard of milk thistle, but there's reason to it because it has a wide array of effects at protecting our liver, which is really beautiful. Um, so if, if you hate milk thistle or you have an allergy to milk thistle, well, there's other herbs out there. I also love turmeric for the liver, and you'll hear turmeric more than once on this because it's, it has a wide, and it's, it's really versatile as well, but uh, it has an anti-inflammatory component as well as the ones that I just mentioned, but it also is really nice at balancing those inflammatory cytokines, which really push that inflammation in the body and the immune response. Fennel, love fennel. I even like eating fennel, but fennel can be really helpful because it has similar effects, but it's also helpful at reducing inflammation in the liver from infections, particularly the viral ones, as is licorice, another one. Uh, helpful at reducing the scarring in the liver, as well as being an antiviral and helping uh, protect the liver as a whole. I also love dandelion and I love artichoke. So nature has given us these medicines. It's pretty incredible for us to not only protect, but heal the liver. So think about the liver as one of your essentials, okay? What's another essential? Brain, 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 right? Uh, by virtue of what all of us do, we're really using our brain every single day. And as we get older, we need more support, right? We need more stimulation. I know personally, when I got sick with mold, my brain was effective. And you know, I'm, I'm maybe 90% of where I was, but it's been a year and a half already for me to recover. So the brain can be really vulnerable. I did a show on BDNF. BDNF is brain-derived neurotropic factor. Really, really important show. Um, but I spoke about some brain-supporting herbs herbs, nutrients, and mushrooms. We need to support our brain because it is always inundated with threats, right? And when it's inundated with threats, that's an issue. We don't want brain inflammation because it can affect our mood uh, short term, but also predispose us to long-term neurological diseases, neurocognitive issues, right? In our kids, we can see behavioral changes. So the brain is so, so important. Lion's mane, I just mentioned because it's so, so important at stimulating it has these polysaccharides and that stimulates BDNF, which basically means that it's helping support and stimulate the nerves of the brain. BDNF, when it's optimized, that means your brain is fully optimized. You want to always support it and stimulate it. And when I took the lion's mane, I noticed an immediate difference. So not only that, you're promoting BDNF, neural connections, new nerves in the brain, but you're also supporting focus and memory, which is so cool that a mushroom can do that, right? So, uh, and not only that, there's a two for one. It really helps you with deep sleep. And I know I had, sometimes I get some issues sleeping, but it increases that deep REM sleep. So you'll find yourself sleeping again. So for me, brain support is so, so important, lion's mane. One of my favorite ones is the one by Life Cycle. I've been talking about this for a reason. It's the best one I've came across. Um, now you may not like mushrooms, and that's okay, because there are many other things that can support your brain. There's some herbs that I mentioned on one of my posts, some of my favorite ones, bacopa, ginkgo, rosemary, agents like phosphatidylserine. These all also help, not all of them in particular, but some of these can help with BDNF. But what we do see is it helps increase brain circulation, which is really important, memory, cognition, creation, being creative, protecting the brain, having an antioxidant effect. So I use a few. I do like the Noto Bravi by Quicksilver. It has some of these in here, but I will mention, and remember this guys, when it comes to herbs, herbs are poorly regulated and you want to get a good herb supplement. I found some good herb companies out there, but the best ones are the ones that I trust most at this point, and I'm sure there's many out there that I, I don't know about yet. Um, Medi Herb. Medi Herb is some of the best herbal formulations in the world, in my opinion. They're out of Australia. Um, Gaia, which is more readily accessible and available, as Medi Herb is really a practitioner brand. Gaia is a really good one. They are transparent. You can follow your herb from the farm to the bottle. Um, and Gaia tends to have real, some really good formulas. I always look at it, and they keep true to really having a high quality supplement. And Wise Women Herbs. Wise Women Herbs is another one that we used in school and they have a lot of really good tinctures. Um, Herb Farm is pretty good. You can find Herb Farm readily too. They're pretty good, their tinctures. Um, I just think the other three are better. So I just want you all to remember that anytime you think of herbs, think of 
purchasing them from those companies. Um, again, I'll do more research into other companies. So that was number three. So we got minerals, we got liver, and we got brain. Those are my, some of my favorites already. We can end this show, but we can't end it. We can't because I need to talk about longevity. Longevity is so, so important. Mitochondrial support. No, we're not talking enough about this, at least in pop culture, but really in like the biohacker space, we talk about it a lot. It's important. It's really important, right? Because we're all getting older, right? We're all physically getting older. Our chronological age is going, going up. My birthday was just recently. Now, biological age is really important, right? I did a show on telomeres and talked about how that is a marker of biological aging, right? So I can be 36, but my body can be 52 or it can be 25, right? So those, that's more important than this chronological age. So we really want to make sure we're optimizing this. Now, when we support our mitochondria, we support our cells. So this is really what you want to feel, so really want to start paying close attention to. Now, when you take longevity support formulas, it's just that, longevity, it's for the long run. You take it for a while, you take it for a long time, and, and you won't feel the immediate effect of like, let's say, lion's mane. So curcumin, really good one. Uh, curcumin is a constituent that is found in turmeric. That's the active ther therapeutic constituent. Um, it's an excel excellent antioxidant, and by virtue of being a really powerful, strong antioxidant, it makes it one of the best inflammatories, but it's also promoting longevity because oxidation is really what affects those, the DNA and the mitochondria and causes that aging. And there's many other antioxidants out there that we can talk about, but one I take personally is called NAD. Um, NAD is really hot in the biohacker space, but I wanted to share it for the people who don't know. Um, NAD is a hydrogen carrier in our cells, and it's important because that hydrogen carrier helps produce energy, right? In our mitochondria, remember if you remember biology, um, when you were young, mitochondria is a powerhouse of the cell, uh, and that's where that reaction occurs that produces energy. NAD goes down the older we get. It's actually believed to be one of the main reasons why we age. Aging is pretty much connected, in, but with many people and what we see in a lot of literature, with reduce and reduction in an NAD. It plays a key role in almost every reaction in our body. It's amazing. Now, you need NAD precursors. You can't just take NAD unless you get it IV. Um, niacin is one, but it's high dose niacin. And the problem with that is that you can have a niacin flush for many of you who've tried it, and it's very uncomfortable. Um, so I take, tr I take two. Uh, and I, I go back and forth. I take true niogen, which gives you the form of nicotinamide riboside chloride, and I take NAD gold by Quicksilver, which is nicotinamide mononucleotide. Forget those words, but just know that those are really important precursors to NAD, and both I found to be the best ones out there at helping give you those precursors so you can build up NAD in the body. Now, uh, it's really important to build up NAD, as I mentioned, for longevity, but also it's gonna help protect and stabilize that mitochondria, which is really important, uh, especially when it comes to brain and nervous system support, liver support, blood vessel support, kidney and pancreas support, muscle support, right? Um, and what you may see is it, it being potentially helpful in hearing loss, right? Helping reduce hearing loss, um, improve motor dysfunction, improve cardiovascular disease, preventing diabetes, obesity, preventing cardiovascular disease, preventing diabetes, preventing obesity, even cancer. Cognitive decline, vision loss, fatty liver, remember I just spoke about that, infertility, inflammation. As I mentioned, NAD is pretty much involved in every reaction and for that reason it's so, so important. So I've been taking it for three months and I love it. Now, uh, other complementary supplements to NAD could be EGCG. That's a constituent found in matcha. Why do, you think I told, why do you think I tell you to take matcha every single day? It's for longevity. It's for its antioxidant effect. Resveratrol, another really good one. And no, a glass of wine is not going to get you enough resveratrol and CoQ10. So the last one is really an, uh, a fish oil or an algae oil. And the reason I say these is because it's important for balance in your omegas. The problem with the standard American diet is that the ratio of omega-6 to omega-3, and mind you, we need both, but omega-6 can be pro-inflammatory as a rule of thumb, and omega-3 can be anti-inflammatory. It is anti-inflammatory. And, and it should be at, a, at about 6 to 1 or 4 to 1 omega-6 to omega-3. But in the standard American diet, we have it about 10 to 1 up to 50 to 1. So we are at an inflamed state. And remember, inflammation is huge, not only for long-term disease, but even predisposition to getting sick or infections or viral infections as what we're dealing with now. Inflammation is everything. So you want to 
balance that inflammation, your body's overall inflammation through diet, of course, but you also want to get anti-inflammatory. So I mentioned turmeric or curcumin before, and I'll show you which one that I take on the next segment, but um, just pay really close attention to your omega-3 to 6 ratio, and you can do this on a micronutrient analysis. We do this on Genova, or you can do it on SpectraCell test if you ask your naturopathic doctor or your functional doctor. When it comes to algae or fish oil, I myself am a vegan, uh, so I take the algae one, um, but I want you to pay close attention to a genetic mutation, right, if you're taking this. It's called a FADS gene, F-A-D-S. Algae oil usually comes in a form that is converted later to EPA or DHA, like what comes in as the fish oil. Um, some folks can't efficiently convert it. So unfortunately, you can be taking a ton of algae oil, but you're not getting enough therapeutic balance of EPA or DHA, those anti-inflammatory omega-3s. Right, So um, you can always take a genetic test to see if you have that. I, I personally am fine with that. But if that's the case, you just want to take really strong anti-inflammatories. And again, this is where you want to think about turmeric or curcumin, the constituent in turmeric. They sell both. Um, Boswellia, bromelain. These are anti-inflammatories that you want to think about long term. And special mentions I want to talk about. Um, they didn't make my top five, but they may, they could have just as easily. Magnesium is one of the most depleted minerals and magnesium is involved in everything. I did a whole show on magnesium. So go back and check that out so you know which form of magnesium to take as well as what it does and why we need it. So magnesium, I personally, look, I don't take five supplements as my essentials. I take about eight, but still magnesium is one of them in there because it helps me sleep. And I know that by virtue of just the soil, and even absorption, the magnesium is an issue for a lot of us. And then gut stuff, pre or probiotics. Um, prebiotics being the ones that really feed the existing gut flora and probiotics adding in the microflora. Some of my favorite ones are by Claire, Orthomolecular, and Microbiome Labs. And one of the last essentials that I wanted to talk about was adrenal. So many of us are so, 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 so stressed. So we really wanna make sure that we are taking stuff for our adrenals. So again, my essentials are like top eight, but I gave you the top fives, top five, but we wanna really start thinking about how can we use adaptogens, adaptogenic herbs. And I mentioned the herb companies to you, but think about rhodiola, holy basil, schizandra, licorice. Those are, those are adaptogens that can be really helpful at uh, making, helping our adrenal glands and our brain adapt that HPA axis where they communicate and the brain says, oh my God, there's a lot of stress. Adrenals shoot out a lot of cortisol, epinephrine, norepinephrine. It, it basically calms down the adrenal. It says, hey, you're good. Shoot it out, you know, when you're stressed, but it doesn't have to be as, uh, as emphasized as it, as, it, as it would be when you're in a really stressed state. So think about adaptogens, okay? So to reiterate, minerals, liver, brain, longevity, anti-inflammatories, magnesium, pre and probiotics, and adrenal support. Those are my top eight. Gave you top five, but those are my top eight. Those are the ones that I take, okay? A little bonus for you. Um, so without further ado, let's, why don't we just go to this product review so I can just show you some uh, products that are some of my favorite ones here. So then you'll have some guidance on how to shop. All right, so I wanted to review some of the supplements that I take. Uh, so it's not really a supplement review, it's just here is guidance on some of my favorites. Um, oh, the Quintan Minerals I didn't bring, but it, I, show, I spoke about it on the last episode. You guys can look it up. It's in the glass vial, um, and there's the Hypertonic and Isotonic. They're from Quicksilver, and uh, they're really, really great ones. You just break the vial. You can give it to kids. You can put it in their water. The Hypertonic is going to be a little more salty, so I suggest putting that in water. Um, but you could put it on your you could put it under your tongue or in your mouth and swish it around if you want. Isotonic is going to be less. And I spoke about the difference on uh, two episodes ago, so check that out. Um, here are some of the liver supportive ones. So let's get to liver. Here is glutathione. This is the one I take. It's by Quicksilver. Um, this is a brand new one. Uh, this is the master antioxidant. We take two pumps. This is liposomal glutathione is poorly absorbed, so we take two pumps under the tongue. Again, not medical advice. This is how I do it. Um, I also use the one from uh, Quicksilver, the liver sauce, and this is a little dirty because it's just, you know, I, I, I made a mess here. But anyway, uh, the liver sauce is really an important one because it has some of those herbs that I was mentioning, D dandelion root. It has uh, milk thistle in here, quercetin. So remember I said a lot of herbs are really going to be helpful for liver, so pay attention to that. Here's the one, Medi Herb, 
MediHerb is the company that I mentioned, and I mentioned licorice before. MediHerb is another really good herbal company. Remember, I said, I said MediHerb, I said Wise Women, and I said Gaia. Okay, let's get to the brain supplements. Remember, I spoke about Life Cycle, Life Cycle Lion's Mane, one of my favorite ones out there. Um, they just do good work. And Julian, the founder, was on the show, and it's just go back and check the show, and you'll love mushrooms. You can't not. Um, Lion's Mane is amazing. Here is the other one that I use for my brain. This is Noto Bravi by Quicksilver. Um, remember, I spoke about the, some of the herbs for the brain. Uh, and this one is a really nice one because it contains a lot of those herbs. So I love this one. Easy to take in the morning on an empty stomach. Here are some of the longevity ones. Remember, I spoke about NAD. I take the NAD Gold by Quicksilver. NAD Gold is an amazing one. Um, again, easy to take. Uh, and this one actually tastes good. Some of these don't taste good, Quicksilver. It's okay because... You know, I don't expect herbs to be good, but this one is really, this one is the tastiest one of all. And then the other one I switched that NAD goal with is a true niogen. This is a capsule. If you get your NAD or NAD precursors, you want to get it from true niogen. All right. So some of the anti-inflammatories. Um, I have the two oils. Here is uh, the Metagenics. So if you do take fish oils, you want to take them. There's not that many good companies out there really for fish oils. I haven't found... Um, but med I did a whole review on fish oil, so go back and check. I review most of them. Uh, the good companies out there, Wiley's being one of them. I don't have the Wiley's, but I do have the Metagenics one. It's a, and this is one of the best ones that I found as far as dosage and purity. Um, I don't take these because I myself am a vegan, as you may know. So I use the Vivo Life one, which is a really good company. Um, and this is the plant-based Algae Omega. Uh, really good one. Tastes a little fishy, but that's what you'd expect. Um, and then I wanted to go over the anti-inflammatories along with the fish oil. Um, I spoke about turmeric many times. This is the Thorn Mariva one. Thorn Mariva is one of my favorite forms of uh, turmeric to take, the curcumin. Um, Thorn is a very trusted company overall. They're really involved in a lot of the athletics in America, but really high quality doctor practitioner one. Um, if you don't like turmeric, then you can use uh, Boswellia. Boswellia is really uh, a beautiful anti-inflammatory as well. But remember, inflammation in the body is really important. So I would recommend bringing up that omega-3 uh, and bringing down that omega-6. And I would recommend complementing it with an anti-inflammatory. And some of the last ones I spoke about, I have two forms of magnesium. Uh, one is Magteen. It was given to me by a dear friend on uh, Instagram. Uh, Dr. James, and this is a really, really nice form that is helpful. It's the L3 and 8 form, which is helpful at relaxing the brain. And then I have the glycinate form from Pure, which is a big bottle. This is probably a little more, more affordable, but the glycinate one's really nice at helping uh, induce sleep. Glycinate being a very commative amino acid. Both of these go to the brain. The way I see it is basically the magteen for more focus and the glycinate for more relaxation. But if you are confused about the forms, go, go back and check out my magnesium show. And some of the last ones I spoke about with some gut ones. Um, I did mention the uh, probiotic um, companies, but I didn't mention the Metagenics one. I do like this one. I have this one at home, Ultra Flora Spectrum, Claire, Microbiome Labs, Orthomolecular. They all make really good probiotics as well. Um, again, let me give you a tip about probiotics. If you buy probiotics and they're not in the refrigerator, don't put them in the refrigerator and then bring them back out. Probiotics like to be in a stable environment the whole time. So if they need to be in the refrigerator and you get them, put them in the refrigerator, leave them there. Um, if they don't need to be, leave them out and don't, just don't change the temperature on probiotics. This is a really nice one. It's by Dr. Zach Bush and this is the Ion Gut Health Cleanser. Um, this is humic acid. And the reason I use this I, in particular is because this has been one of the only known nutrients to really reduce glyphosate in the body. And man, I talk about glyphosate as one of the biggest threats to our food system, but our health as well and our digestive health. So um, I do take this one every day and I met Dr. Zach Bush and he's so damn passionate about detoxing the body from glyphosate, glyphosate as well as regenerative farming. So um, I trust him very much so. And this is a good product. You just have to take it consistently. Um, so really cool. And it's, and it's also helpful at bringing that barrier, right, that, that leaky gut, closing up that barrier, which is awesome stuff. So this is something I do take every morning. Um, again, I don't take all of these. I just wanted to pick out different brands that I trust, so pay attention to the brands. And then lastly, the adrenal health. Remember I spoke about stress, really important. I talked about Gaia. This is how the Gaia supplement looks, um, the Gaia brand. 
of supplements. I love the way they formulate, they use really good herbs. And here's the nice part, you can enter this ID that they give you on GaiaHerbs.com and you can follow where your herbs came from. That's transparency. And I mentioned Herb Farm, it's not my favorite herb company, but it's a pretty good one. And this is Eleuthero, this is an adaptogen, another adaptogen that we use. So um, helpful for physical and mental stamina. Um, so again, I don't take all these supplements at once, they're just brands and I wanted to share with everyone what brands to use. Um, so I hope this was helpful at giving you the essentials uh, and you know, sort of concentrating down all of the supplements that you may have as your cabinet in your cabinet. That, uh, so you have some more clarity and more direction and less stress. All right, so speaking about stress, I am really hungry. So I need to be talking to this chef about all her first chef experiences, all about how she puts food into a beautiful presentation, but really how she connects it with the energetic body. So let's talk to Serena Poon about what she loves about food, medicine, and energy. Today's special guest is a very special one. She's a classically trained chef, celebrity chef, Reiki master and certified nutritionist. Very special guest, Serena Poon. Thank you for coming. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. Oh, this is so this is so fun. So we have mutual friends. Yes. And the we best ended up people. Yeah, the best people and we ended up uh, hooking up on this show, which is really important because you know how much I love food medicine. Yes. But you've tied it in. What really got you interested in food in the first place? Well, I mean, I've always had a love for food. I mean, it's just, I'm Chinese. And so, of course, the kitchen has always been the heart of the home and like so many homes. So, I mean, I grew up loving food. My parents were foodies, like watching my grandmother like cook. It's always been a thing. But when I was in college, uh, my dad was diagnosed with stage four liver cancer. And it was something, it was like a blood disease. His grandfather had it too. It was something that he had been watching his whole adult life. And somehow between two six month appointments, it went from fine to stage four. So of course, you know, he did like allopathic medicine and chemo radiation, but we we're all also doing Chinese teas, like traditional Chinese medicine. And just watching him go through that, I, I just started to dive into like plants and herbs and what could I find to at least give him some sort of comfort, alleviate some symptoms. Um, and my dad being such a big foodie because it was liver cancer too, he was really limited to what he could eat. So that was really that beginning part of this journey in terms of what I do now. And so after about a little over a year, we lost him and now he's my angel. Mm -hmm. And uh, two months later, my mom was diagnosed with cancer. Whoa. So they were both in their 40s. And so that was really what propelled me to really dive into not just food as medicine, but food is already love and comfort. So how do we bring the two together so that people, and this is obviously like people who are not feeling well, people who are not healthy, like how do we still give them comfort and joy and healing, mm -hmm. you know, with food and herbs and plants and different things. And so that's really what started me on it. Um, and then I decided instead of going to law school, mm -hmm. you know, I decided to go to culinary school to really understand the culinary arts, to make food as medicine that's not just healing, but also like visually and, you know, appealing and also appealing mm -hmm. to the palate. So because usually when someone's not well, a doctor gives you a very basic very bland option you yeah. know in terms of a menu but that's just because they don't know they yeah. don't know that food is so much more than that and it's beautiful and it's medicine but it's also medicine for the soul mm -hmm. you know it's medicine for your heart yeah so that's the beginning of it and it's an amazing story because um and i relate to that a lot because i seen it when mm -hmm. my mom was sick yeah. We uh, didn't have many options from the dietitian yeah. as far as calorically dense foods or foods she needs to be eating. Mm -hmm. And I took it upon myself to do that, but healthier version, right? Yeah. But yeah. the thing is, I'm far from a chef. And anyone who knows me <laughs> knows that like, <laughs> my talents are other places, but certainly not in the kitchen. And bless you for having patience to cut a carrot or an onion because that is just... <laughs> I need, I need it done fast. But, Actually, I love like cutting a carrot into all the little bitty pieces so, because it's beautiful. But you brought such, such a good point. Even the presentation aspect is mm -hmm. like the first part of digestion, right? Mm -hmm. You see it and you're like, oh my God, like this is presented beautifully. Mm -hmm. It's even more delicious before it even hits your mouth. And we know mm -hmm. that like 
there's the phase, the cephalic phase, and that means when just, you're just smelling the food or touching yeah. the food or even seeing the food, your digestion's already starting. Absolutely. Yeah, you know? so, so, I'm and sorry. And that's from a physiological, physiological level, right? Yeah. That your, your digestion's already started, but from an energetic place as well. Like your body, your body is getting ready to receive, you mm -hmm. know, it's getting ready to receive the nutrients of the food, but from an energetic place, it's also getting ready to receive. Mm -hmm. And so, and so we just, these are all basic things that we often overlook, especially if we don't know, mm -hmm. you know, if we're mm -hmm. not kind of tapped in or tuned or introduced to that aspect of it. Mm -hmm. So, so when you jumped into culinary school, I know you didn't learn about like, food medicine, it was more the technique and how to make good food. Yeah. So then like, how did you start incorporating like the medicinal part or or even the energetic part? Like, I wanna know how all of this tied in and how'd you even get into all of this aside from the food medicine part, the, even the energetic aspect too? Yeah, that, that's a great question. Thank you. It's, it's actually all been a part of my journey and mm -hmm. kind of my own personal journey. So I started diving into food as medicine, obviously from where my parents were, and I went into culinary school to understand. And I was I was studying nutrition, like the whole time. Mm -hmm. You know, I was studying in, when I was in college at Berkeley, but then off to the side, just as I was even in school, and and then we were taught in school. But it was also because what what we're taught is very kind of basic. I call it conventional nutrition, yeah. and I just wanted to go outside of that. You know, I was studying holistic um, options and that modality, and also Ayurvedic. And I re I'm Chinese, so Chinese medicine is a big mm -hmm. part of, um, I guess, not just my upbringing, but my belief system and how I use different foods and herbs. So, so I was always from the start, you know, kind of infusing that into my clients' foods and, you know, but the thing is what I realized with what happened with my parents, I kind of shifted from, okay, so this happened, changed my whole life, this is what I'm gonna do, and my goal was I just need to take care of everyone that I love and care about, and mm -hmm. everyone just needs to stay happy and healthy, which is a great, like, goal, you know, it's a great thing to want to do, but I was leaving myself out of it. So I was leaving the aspect of, self-care out of it. Mm. And so what started happening in me was this buildup of inflammation. Yeah. Um, and so then I started to get sick and I had some health issues. And so a few years after culinary school, I, um, I had to have surgery because I, you know, had a lot of inflamed tissue. I had mm. some tissue I needed to remove, uh, benign. And, and um, from that operation, I got MRSA which is MSRA, mm -hmm. deadly staph infection. And so that, that just completely changed the trajectory of what I was doing simply as like food and yeah. nutrition because that ended up being like an eight surgery journey for me. I mean, my last surgery was just last year. Yeah. Um, and so in the course of that, I started to really understand that it's not as simple as like, the physical body. You know, there was so much that was connected to our emotional body and our spiritual body. Mm -hmm. And I started uh, I started working with energy, I was working with healers, and I chose Reiki as sort of like my, uh, my vessel, you know, to kind of really move energy. Mm -hmm. Not mostly, it started with just for myself. Um, and to learn that technique and understanding that everything is energy, you know, everything is connected and understanding that, okay, yes, that carrot comes from the farmer's market, but that carrot first came from the earth, mm -hmm. you know, and it's connected to the earth and it receives the vibrations. And so it's receiving the nutrients that we put into the soil and if it's organic, it doesn't have pesticides or, you know, if it's not, it gets all those mm -hmm. bad things, but it's also getting that energetic vibration of the earth and really understanding how it's all very connected. So that's how I started to really infuse um, that mental and emotional he health and healing, which includes mindfulness and meditation and really mm. adding in that layer of self-care and taking care of my body, but also energy work and realizing that that was almost like that missing piece, you know, because you can go to yoga class, you know, and you can eat well and you can exercise and deal, you know, your weights and, you know, your stretches and all of that. But there might still be another, another tiny layer that you're missing out on because you're not nourishing that energetic body right. in this other way. And so that's when I decided to, that's when I realized, oh, I, this is, this is that, 
missing link mm -hmm. is fusing it this way. Mm -hmm. um, and that came from a personal experience I had. We can dive into it or not, but I uh, had almost died after one of my surgeries, and that just kind of blew everything. Uh, it, what it, what's the phrase? It blows the top off of everything. Yeah, yeah, broke um, the camel's back. Okay, yeah, or, or mm. what? You know, it's just it, it was just where this happened, and here I was doing nutrition, what I knew. Um, here I was doing what the doctors were saying, but um, but it wasn't healing everything, and so that's when I realized I'm not incorporating this aspect of it. Mm -hmm. This is so uh, important and interesting to me because. Um, as of late, especially this year, a mm -hmm. lot of the podcast approach has shifted. I mean, it's always been the plan, but it's shifting more into like the understanding of the mind, the body, and the spirit yeah. into our physical health. And the yes. analogy I always give is the glacier, and the glacier is standing over water mm -hmm. is the physical manifestation, but under that is everything else. Oh, yeah. That's a mental, emotional, spiritual body. Mm -hmm. And I love that you're incorporating that and have done that with yourself. Mm -hmm. So then say like, say, how, how would you approach how do you use your skill set in cooking mm -hmm. and your skill set in just preparing the most incredible visually appealing meals? Mm -hmm. um, and then how do you tie in that energetic mind body part? Like how do, how do we, what do we take from this? That's what, I'm, that's yeah. what I want to know. How do we incorporate it? Uh, I love that you asked we that question know. because it's something so simple. Um, so you're, let's say how you start your day, right? I'm sure you have a gratitude practice that you start at the beginning of the day, as do I. And what I teach is when you start that gratitude, because this is before you make dinner, this is what you're doing at the beginning of the day, right? And I, I start here because this is what you're con going to connect to when you make your food. Mm -hmm. So your gratitude practice. You are, you know, you might be laying there and meditating or journaling and kind of going through what it is that you're grateful for. What's really important that I, that I share with my clients and my, com my community is that when you're thinking about that which you're grateful for, I want it to be almost visceral for you. Like mm. You feel it. You feel and connect to an actual feeling. And now you're connecting that feeling to your physiological body there's mm -hmm. a feeling you think about that person that you love you think about that dessert that you mm -hmm. love I can think of it <laughs> evokes a physical response right. right connect to that feeling you go through your practice go through your day always start with lemon water warm lemon water you go through your day when you get to the point where you're now in your kitchen actually in your kitchen if you're doing warm lemon water but you're in your kitchen and you're going to prepare your breakfast or your lunch right as you're preparing I want you to take that feeling that you now have a connection to of gratitude that you have now connected to your physical body and I want you to set that intention into your food. Mm. Into the food. Into so the, the food. So the breakfast is right in front of so you. So that breakfast, as you're preparing, you're making, you know, let's say you're not plant-based and you're making eggs, mm -hmm. you know, or you're plant-based and you're doing like avocado toast, mm -hmm. whatever it is. In that preparation process, you are looking, you're, you're looking at these ingredients and you are giving gratitude and you're connecting that feeling of gratitude that you had a physical connection with mm -hmm. earlier, right? When you're doing your gratitude practice and you're connecting that and infusing it with that food. Mm. That in a way, it's, I mean, there's Reiki, there's Prana, there's so many different types of modalities, but we're all just moving energy, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so this is where you're, it's like you are intention setting and putting that intention and that vibration and that energy into your food, which you are then going to put back into your body mm -hmm. or you now serve someone else that I would say in its most basic form anyone can do mm -hmm. you know I do a little bit more than that obviously like I do I do the Reiki mm -hmm. you know and I do blessings and other things when I'm in the food preparation process I'm also very aware as I'm preparing food whether it's for myself or for someone else uh, where the imbalances in their body is and mm -hmm. what areas of their body from a physiological place as well as like an energetic place they may need more support so those are the ingredients that I'm choosing and that's what I'm putting together so for me it's a little bit more involved but for for like what you're saying the takeaway to you is that that one very very simple thing that you can do which is that feeling that you take in the morning you take that when you're preparing the food mm -hmm. and you have now literally charged the, the vibration of your food and just try it because mm -hmm. you will feel it and it'll feel different. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I agree. You know, ever since I've actually just been doing like a 10 second prayer before my food, yeah. 
you'll notice that actually your digestion is even different. A hundred percent. And certainly, to, and one thing that, shoot, I was guilty of is like having my phone right next to me, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and every now and then just eating and just, you know, oh, let me update this or let mm -hmm. me put up this post or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, but the phone is a huge no-no for me now. Because mm -hmm. uh, that, that's going to disrupt that whole energetic vibration mm -hmm. of your connection to the food. Absolutely. Right? And in and of itself, it's almost ceremonial, right? Mm -hmm. And you just don't realize that it can be. You know, we talk about routines and rituals and how important they are and how important they are, especially if something disrupts our day, right? Mm -hmm. We lean on these on these routines that we set up for ourselves. We lean on these rituals. If you have a very good gratitude practice or a very good meditation practice, whatever it is, a, a physical practice, when your day is at its worst, that's when you lean on these things because it comes second nature for you. It's the same thing when you take in food. You know, when you treat it almost like it's a little mini ceremony, you know, it's a little mini ritual, but you're, you're, this food is blessed, you're blessing your body with it, and it's something to not just be really grateful for, but it enhances the nutrient intake, and it mm -hmm. enhances, as you said, the way your body receives mm -hmm. and the way your body will digest it. Mm -hmm. So it completely changes the vibration. And just thinking about it from just not even the energetic standpoint, the the neurology, like your nervous system mm -hmm. is already going into that parasympathetic rest Absolutely. and digest with a capital D, capital digest mm -hmm. uh, state when we eat. So, yes. and we can easily put ourselves back in sympathetic if we're driving, yep. right? And we're mm -hmm. on our phone or mm -hmm. we're on our phone and eating or you're talking to someone the whole time. Mm -hmm. um, so I love, I mean, I make matcha every morning, right? Oh yeah, me and too. And there's a reason I do ceremonial matcha is me because <laughs> it's part of my ritual. Yes, so yes. It's like, the very act of adding the water to the matcha and whisking it, mm -hmm. like just being very present and watching as the bubbles come up, mm -hmm. and then going, I go outside and I put my feet on the ground and I, I drink it. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's perfect. Yeah, and that's um, because it's so much more than matcha in that moment, right? Mm -hmm. And at the same time, you're still receiving all the antioxidants, mm -hmm. all the nutritional benefits of the matcha. So that's what your physical body is receiving, but your emotional and your and your mental and your energetic body is also receiving. And so it's like a whole system. Mm. So, you know, it's just one just enhances the other, right? Um, so that's really what it is. If you want like a very basic, simple takeaway, yes. And we just aren't aware that when we give it that presence and we give it that grace, that it actually enhances the way our bodies are able to receive it as you said, from a, from a place of science mm -hmm. um, and the way our bodies process it. Mm -hmm. So I love that. So, so you, before we got on, you showed me this chart and it was a pretty incredible chart. Uh -huh. So for people who don't know, how uh -huh. would you describe chakras? Okay, so the chakras are, you know, your energetic centers. So in your body, we have, we have more than seven chakras, but we just, typically we talk about seven basic yeah. chakras. And they're your energy centers that are aligned with different parts of your physical body. So you have your root, your sacral, your solar plexus, your heart, uh, your throat, your third eye, and your crown. And each area where that chakra is as it goes up your body, first to the seventh, they align with those areas of your physical body. So, you know, uh, when you're in your lower chakras, your first and second, that's your reproductive um, organs, mm -hmm. your, your hormones, digestion, and as you move up, you know, everywhere where the chakra is, your, your, um, your fourth chakra, which is your heart chakra, that's right where your heart is. Uh, so they basically help balance from an energetic place uh, that part of your body. It's all kind of, it's all connected basically. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's, an, it's an energy center. Okay, energy center, and I know that they're like they coincide with certain colors, but mm -hmm. you really bringing to light that certain foods may be nourishing to these chakras, correct? Yes, yes, uh, okay. 100%. So let's take, for example, your heart chakra, right? That's my favorite one. Oh, yay, perfect. And the throat. <laughs> yes, heart Two of the throat. ones that I've been working on for. 12 years. Okay, well we can, we can work on that too. Okay, we can do that. <laughs> so let's say the heart chakra, right? Your heart chakra is your fourth chakra. The color aligned with that chakra is green. So, so, and you know, people might think, oh, it's the heart, it's red, it's pink. Those colors also align, but on, in our chakra system, it's green. And so why that's a great uh, example is if you think about all the foods that are green. So to make it very simple, if you eat foods that where the color is in alignment with the color of that chakra, you are actually nourishing that energy center mm -hmm. and thereby nourishing the physical areas, the organs that are in that same zone in your body.
So if you think about the foods that are green, they're highly alkalizing, they're highly oxygenating, they help with circulation, they're full of you know, mm. B vitamins, all these different vitamins that are so good for your cardiovascular system. So, so it's already from a physical place nourishing for that energy center and your cardiovascular system, but it's also it's also helping to balance, you know, balancing, let's say, clear any blockages, balance that energy center from a, from like a energetic, spiritual place. Mm -hmm. So I wrote an article, I should share it with you, um, but it's about like what foods you eat if you're, if you have a heartbreak or something like mm -hmm. that. And I really dive into all these different types of green foods that actually support your nervous system which is what's going to help relax you mm -hmm. because when you are heartbroken, you are, your body is tense. Mm -hmm. You're in that, you know, sympathetic, sympathetic mode yeah. and you're probably lacking certain nutrients mm -hmm. because your body's just not even receiving it. So helping to open up and oxygenate and oxygenate your microvascular system, mm -hmm. all of it, because you're putting in these really nutrient dense nurturing greens mm -hmm. is actually helping you physiologically and at the at the same time feeding that energy center and mm -hmm. feeding your heart. I love that. Mm -hmm. I love the way we, we look at it because you can talk about it energetically mm -hmm. and I'm thinking about the leafy greens and yeah. the micronutrients in yep. it and then connecting that to the, to the heart. Yeah. And actually it does have some really nice connection. That's why, you know, heart healthy foods include those leafy greens. Exactly. Whether or not it's even energetic, American Heart Association. Exactly. So it's really cool to hear that. Um, just from a place of science, it already makes sense, yeah. you know, so. Yeah. yeah, so then what about, what would you say for then the throat? Mm -hmm. The throat is something that like men and women alike mm -hmm. suffer from not being able to open and speak their truth without like fear and just being like, here is how I feel, boom. Mm -hmm. um, what, what, what were some colors or foods, food, color foods that you have defined out of this? So, so, and we can, we can look at this yeah. if you want. So for the throat, you know, as you see the throat, it's really about, you know, like, like authenticity, you mm -hmm. know, like, are you able to speak your truth as you say? So I talk a lot about very simple things to open up the throat and swallow. Mm -hmm. So liquids, soups, teas, juices, mm -hmm. that type of thing. And of course, like certain berries. Um, there's also, interestingly enough, like sea plants, because these are all things that are very, it's sort of like easy to go in. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't have to put in a lot of effort to open it up and receive mm -hmm. those nutrients. So that actually really helps to support your your throat chakra. And of course, anything that's aligned with these colors. I mean, blueberries are good for, for the third eye primarily, but it's also very good for the, thr for the throat chakra. Mm -hmm. And what I love, again, about the type of foods that are good for that throat chakra is because it's very much, it's immediately nourishing. And most of the time when someone has a hard time speaking their truth, um, there's that hesitation, there's that either lack of certainty or confidence, there's a part of them that is not nourished. Mm -hmm. You know, there is a part of them that hasn't received. And so when you're bringing in, that's why if, if, you're, if, you're, not, if you're sick and you don't feel good and you don't really want to eat, you know, they say drink broth, drink mm -hmm. soup. Mm -hmm. You know, these are very immediately nourishing. Yeah, yeah, they're nourishing and they're soothing and they're nutrient dense that you don't have to digest mm -hmm. as much. You don't have to chew, it just goes right in. So that would be something that's mm -hmm. really good for the throat chakra. But interestingly, um, I talk I talk sometimes about chakra polarity, mm -hmm. you know, and I can dive into that in a second because sometimes what's going on with your throat may actually be an imbalance or a block that's in uh, that's in your solar plex, mm. and that's what we don't realize mm. because it's so important that each of our energy centers and along with it, the physical, you know, organs and the physical part of our bodies that's aligned with those energy centers are supported, they're clear, right? They're spinning, they're supported, they're balanced, mm -hmm. but it's also that polarity between the top and the bottom. So as I was mentioning, I think to you before, it's that as mm -hmm. above, so below, mm -hmm. right? And that's really just talking about universal balance. That's talking about like, you know, they use that phrase when we're talking about heaven and earth, you know, or like physical and quantum dimensions, like, you know, it's- Yin and Yang. Yeah, yin, yeah. yin and Yang, and, and it's just about balance. So in the same way, you know, you want your first and seventh to be balanced with each other. You want your second and your sixth to be balanced with each other. Mm -hmm. So you want your third and your fifth to also mm -hmm. be balanced with each other. So 
if you're having a hard time speaking your truth, there might be a block in your solar plex, mm. you know, because your solar plex is about power uh. and energy and balance. So you might want to reach for for foods that align here, mm -hmm. you know, and seeing if it's balanced, if it's balancing out with your throat chakra. Well, it makes if sense. Makes if sense. you're not in your power, mm -hmm. then it would be hard to also speak, speak your, your power, right? Speak mm -hmm. your truth. Mm -hmm. uh, to go back, it was interesting when you mentioned the um, sea vegetables or the mm -hmm. sea plants mm -hmm. for the throat. They're actually rich in iodine and the, yeah. the thyroid is right in the throat. Yes, yes. Which is really cool to hear. So I, Thank I, you for pointing cool. that out. I was I forgot to point that out, but that yes, really cool. exactly. Yeah, so I, I love the way that you've approached this because you're sort of taking like tangible physical foods with measurable micronutrients mm -hmm. and tying it into our energetic bodies which mm -hmm. science is hundreds of years behind mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> so, and you bring it up in science they're like we don't know anything about yeah that. yeah but it, it would be it would be foolish not to say that we are energetic beings mm -hmm. as we know from quantum physics yes. right we are energetic beings yes um so energetic medicine should be if not the first approach, mm -hmm. one of the complementary approaches, always. Yes, I totally agree. And I'm really hoping that it starts to kind of meander that way. And I feel like it's already opening up a little bit, right? Yeah. And I feel like we're sort of in this niche community that really are open to and understand it. But I'm hoping that in our lifetime, it mm -hmm. will become very mainstream, that people understand that it's just it's just sort of that missing piece. I mean, Mother Nature really designed everything perfectly. If you think about science, we actually look at Mother Nature to develop some of the things that we have in um, for space, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, we are copying how, how a butterfly flies mm -hmm. and, you know, the way its wings move against mm -hmm. the wind. It, along those lines, piggyback mm -hmm. on that, we use that in the pharmaceutical industry. Yes, right? exactly. Like, like I think what fifty to sixty percent of pharmaceuticals are coming from nature. They're nature derivatives, just yes. isolates. Yes. Which uh, one of the best ever um, examples is white willow bark, mm -hmm. right? And it contains salicin and, and mm -hmm. salicylic acid, basically, mm -hmm. which is aspirin. Mm -hmm. uh, but white willow bark has that constituent, which helps us with our pain, right? Yeah. So you can use white willow bark, but it also has many other constituents that knowingly, it's, this is incredible. Nature designed white willow bark specific, knowing that the salicin would be irritated, irritating mm. our stomach, mm. like aspirin does when mm. it's alone as an isolate. Mm -hmm. So it put constituents in there that also help protect the stomach. Mm -hmm. So, so us, you know, as human beings, we get so cocky and yeah. we, we take out that one derivative mm -hmm. and yeah, it'll help your pain, but it also irritates your stomach. Yeah. And nature had it done and nature did it perfectly. Nature is thousands of years ahead mm -hmm. of humanity and, and medicine and we'll never catch up to that yes. because it's way, we'll never be able to grasp it. Mm -hmm. uh, but I love the, I love that point that you made. So Speaking of trees, really quick, have you have you worked with um, Arabic and lactin? Mm -hmm. I love Many that. Times, yeah. I mean, that's one of the things I used uh, when we had COVID, and something mm -hmm. that I tell my clients to use. It's just it's just larch tree, yeah. you know, and it's so perfect in that it helps with the respiratory, it helps mm -hmm. with the gut, helps with, with your gut. overall mm -hmm. immune system, mm -hmm. and it's really just it's just from this tree and it's perfect the way it is. Yeah, we used to use the powder in the cancer hospital I worked at to help with immunity and digestive. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's interesting if someone has digestive issues and immune issues, we would mm -hmm. use that if it was indicated and safe. But mm -hmm. I love that like we can use these things from nature to really facilitate. So mm -hmm. uh, so now you have this energetic mold into your your chef and presentation. So like what are you doing now for clients? Like, are you are you teaching them all of these steps? Like, it's beautiful for us to have like those rituals or prayer or intentions. Mm -hmm. um, but what else? Is there anything else that like we can really start doing uh, on top of that, starting mm -hmm. like tomorrow? Well, I mean, I think that it's, it's very because when I work with clients, it's it's uh, it's obviously it's culinary alchemy. That's mm -hmm. my method, right? So, and culinary alchemy really is that combination of integrative functional nutrition with healing intuitive energy. Mm -hmm. So I say you still need to know what's going on in your physical body, mm -hmm. right? Your physiological body. So we start with working with your labs. I have clients run a whole bunch of different labs. So I know and I can see what's going on in your, physio in your physical body. We do a pretty extensive intake. Um, and then and then I do like an, in, like an intuitive, like I do the Reiki mm. and I do an energy read. And I combine all of it to see where it is that your body needs support. 
of course, you balance that with your lifestyle choices. Some people, you know, they want to be able, this is their goal, but they like to have wine every mm. night at five. And I say, okay, if you want to have your wine, this is how we balance it out because yeah. all of life is a balance. Mm. So I would say, you know, it's really important to know what's going on inside your physical body because data and knowledge is just only going to support you. And then we can build around it. So mm. that's one of the things I would say, if you don't know, get your labs run and then what, we're actually creating a program to teach people how they can look at this and then combine it with the foods and see what it is that they, what foods that they should choose at the end of the day. Like we create these lists, mm. you know, and like these are the things you want to choose from. Mm -hmm. um, I would also say, and it sounds so simple, but I also say water. Water. One of the biggest things, and I'm sure you've probably come mm -hmm. across it too, is that people are so dehydrated. Chronically. And it's, and it's not just that our bodies are made up of over 70% water, it's also in order for energy to move, in order for your lymphatic system to detox and drain, just like, and that's the same from an energetic place, you know, in order for energy to move, you really need to be very, very hydrated and it helps with everything from your mental clarity to your hormones, mm -hmm. to your digestion. I mean, you could probably mm -hmm. talk about this with me for mm -hmm. hours. And it's one of the things that I've come across every single, I've never had, that's not true. I've had one client that was actually well hydrated for their body weight. Mm -hmm. But other than that, everyone that I've ever had has been highly dehydrated. Mm -hmm. So between hydration and starting right off with alkalizing and anti-inflammatory foods that are in alignment with what their physical body can take in, because mm -hmm. if they don't, let's say that we make sure they have no um, sensitivities, intolerances, or allergies to anything. And then we look at what their chakra system looks like. I love that. Mm -hmm. You tie, you see, that's how medicine should be done. Mm -hmm. um, nutrition should be done. Mm -hmm. We are missing that huge element of the energetic body, of the mm -hmm. spiritual body. So I love, love, love that you're doing that. Um, do you, well, what's your Instagram, first of all, so people oh. know how to find you? Um, my Instagram is Chef Serena Poon, so it's Chef, S-E-R-E-N-A-P-O-O-N. Mm -hmm. And you have a website, yes? Yes, it's okay. serenaloves.com. Serena loves. I love the loves in there. you got to have the loves yes. somewhere, in, somewhere in there. Yes. Um, and any projects or, or podcasts or anything that oh, you really yeah. we need to know because yeah. I know people love you already. You, no. <laughs> you have this calming energy that's calmed me down. So Thank go you. ahead, uh, t let us know. Um, well, I, I work on actually a lot of different things. I actually have a brand called Just Add Water, mm -hmm. which you got some samples of mm -hmm. today. Um, and that's like a wellness brand that we have. It's a super nutrient dense a blend of all these different superfoods that I'm it's we don't I don't market it enough it's really something that I, I created for clients all my clients use it but it's all vegan organic natural mm -hmm. um, and it's not exactly a protein powder it's really it's really an everything that you need in a day powder. So it's Love got that. eight super greens, your antioxidants, prebiotics, probiotics, digestive enzymes, and also adaptogens. And we use gelatinized maca mm. as opposed to regular mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. it and lacuma. So that's something that I have, you know, I'm always excited about because I know how much it helps people. And then, you know, we've got our podcast and our TV show that now we're doing a lot of through lives. So for anyone that's seen it or wants to watch replays, we have our private Facebook group that we do all the replays on that oh, we'll have yeah. you on too. Yes, please. Yay. So I will be on this month. Yes. Um, awesome, awesome, awesome. So you are a busy woman. I'm so happy that you got to take the time to sit here and teach us oh, and let us I'm know honored. all the goods. Yeah, like honored. again, the we we all should remember that we are energetic beings. Can we mm -hmm. tie the physical, the nutrition, the supplements, mm -hmm. uh, the lifestyle, the medications? Can we tie that to really like the powerful under the water part of the glacier? Mm -hmm. The Absolutely. stuff that we love, the energetic stuff. So mm -hmm. let let us not forget that. So um, yeah. Thank, Thank you, you very so much. much. Thank you. I'm so grateful to you. This is so fun. I love being outside too. This yeah, is this awesome. is a special one. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you. What a wonderful, wonderful conversation. That was really amazing, uh, man. Anytime, uh, anytime we talk about energetic medicine, I'm buzzing, but thank you all for listening and taking the time out of your week. I really appreciate you all. I'm so happy that you showed up. Please rate, please review, please subscribe, support the show, tell everyone you love about it because we are blowing up and it's because of all of you. I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Much love and have a great week.